Hi everyone, it's Peachy and welcome to Black History Month 2023. This is my third year of doing these Creative Sims videos. We have such a rich history and it is often not even mentioned. We know of the figures we learn of in school, but for everyone that everyone knows of, there are so many that you don't hear about. I will link a couple of the videos at the end of this video for you to check out from previous installments or you can click the link above for the entire playlist. Let's get started. On March 2nd, 1955, Claudette Colvin boarded a bus home from school. 15 years old, the tiny Colvin attended Booker T. Washington High School. She'd been politicized by the mistreatment of her classmate, Jeremiah Reeves, and had just written a paper on the problems of downtown segregation. On the bus home that day, the white section filled up. A white woman was left standing. The driver called out and the three students sitting in Colvin's row got up, but Colvin refused. We've been studying the Constitution. I knew I had rights, what she said. The standing white woman refused to sit across the aisle from her. If she sat down in the same row as me, it meant I was as good as her, Colvin noted. The driver yelled out again, why are you still sitting there? Colvin recalled, a white rider yelled from the front, you got to get up. A girl named Margaret Johnson answered from the back, she ain't got to do nothing but stay black and die. There were 13 students on the bus that day, most of them her classmates. The two cops roughly arrested her and pulled her off the bus. Other black people on the bus said Colvin fought like a little tigress, but Colvin maintained that she went limp and didn't fight back. In the patrol car, the officers mocked her and made comments about parts of her body. Colvin worried they might try to rape her. She tried to cover her crouch and put her mind on other things. She stated she recited Edgar Allan Poe, Annabelle Lee, the characters of Midsummer Night's Dream, and the Lord's Prayer, along with the 23rd Psalm. Various civil rights activists in Montgomery were outraged by the arrest and began to organize. Rosa Parks and white ally Virginia Durr began fundraising for young Colvin's case, and more than 100 letters and a stack of donations streamed into Parks' apartment. Parks was hopeful that the young woman's arrest would embolden other young people to action and spark interest in the NAACP youth meetings. The African American community was outraged. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., along with other leaders in the civil rights movement, sought a way to end bus segregation. They looked at Claudette Colvin as a potential face of the movement. As Colvin's friend, Reverend Johnson, told her, everyone prays for freedom. We're all praying and praying, but you're different. You want your answer the next morning. And I think you've just brought the revolution to Montgomery. However, she was deemed too young and her complexion was too dark to be the right fit. Then later, she became pregnant by a man whose name she would not disclose. And that was that. Nine months later, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a bus, and the boycott that was contemplated when Colvin was arrested began. Parks was educated, older, light-skinned, and employed as a seamstress. Although her refusal to move was not directly planned, she was already part of the civil rights movement. She had been trained for civil disobedience by the NAACP. Claudette Colvin's role was not over. She and the three other young women who were harassed on that bus in 1955 became the plaintiffs in a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of segregated buses, Browder versus Gale, and went all the way to the Supreme Court, where the justices found that the Montgomery bus segregation was in violation of the 14th Amendment 
a significant civil rights victory. Rather than seeing her name on par with Rosa Parks for the strength and courage she demonstrated in defying segregation, Claudette Colvin has been largely forgotten. Claudette Colvin, Twice Toward Justice by Peter Hoos tells her story. She was subjected to verbal abuse by city police officers and rather than being confined in the city's juvenile detention facility, placed in a cell in the adult jail until bail was posted by her mother and their minister. Two of the three charges against Colvin were dropped, but she was wrongly convicted of assaulting a police officer. Colvin had a career as a nurse's aide, but the arrest and the conviction remained on her record. In October 2021, with several dozen supporters there to cheer her on, Colvin, then 82, filed a petition in Montgomery County Family Court to have her criminal record expunged. Among those urging the court to approve the petition were Montgomery Mayor Stephen Reed, Montgomery County District Attorney Darrell D. Bailey, and noted civil rights attorney Fred Gray, who represented Colvin in the 1955 case. On November 24, 2021, presiding Judge Calvin Williams issued an order granting the expungement. The judge called Colvin's refusal to give up her bus seat a courageous act on her benefit and on behalf of a community of affected people and said his action would bring a measure of statutory right and fairness to Colvin. Thank you, Ms. Colvin, for sitting down in order to stand for your rights. Thanks for those of you who have stayed all the way through the video. I hope you enjoyed the cast as well as learned some information you may not have known about the person featured in this video. I have previous videos that you can check out like this one or this one. Bye for now.